Thank you. I also wanted to take, I think we covered a question on this recently as well, but we, ha we are seeing quite a lot of questions come in about this and it'd be quite good if I could create, I'm, I'm making you work today, another little mini video, which is around questions about weight loss injections. Ha, so we're, yes. see we're seeing a lot of, of queries coming in about that. So we've seen reference to all the different names. So Zempic, Monjaro, Semaglutide and Wagovi, but just all of the GP, the GLP-1 medications. Um, the two specific questions that we've had in this time, um, diagnosed with PVC last year and responding very well to Urzo with no side effects. Specialist recommends that I lose some weight. However, it's been an unsuccessful struggle. Yeah. Is it safe to take um, a Zempic? Yeah. And then also just a general one around slimming injections as well. But it has something that's come up quite a lot recently. I just think maybe with the yeah. more use of these um, yeah, yeah, these yeah, medications. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, just a, a comment from somebody who's had a liver transplant um, and was advised to take the vaccines. Absolutely, absolutely, because of immunosuppression. And as I said, it, it has to be individualised as a as a thing. But yeah, you know, I'm actually also just recovering from a bout of COVID, and it wasn't very pleasant this time at all. So um, if it, it was. Yeah. I would say probably this time. I've had it once before. This time is probably worse than the time I had the last time. So yes, I think you know this is a moving. Sorry, we're back onto COVID vaccines. This is a bit of a moving target because the different variants. I had it a couple of months ago, and it knocked me for six. So it may be that there's a you know different variant, but we're not getting complications. Here we are having a conversation about it. we're not getting complications from it. I think that's that nobody yeah. doubts that COVID can be a really miserable thing to have. There's no doubt mm -hmm. about that. But it's it's whether it's putting you into ITU or not, and that's the key thing, right? And okay. also, just quickly before we move on, if you are post transplant, you're eligible for the antiviral medication as well. So if you are post transplant, and you get COVID, make sure you ask about yeah. that as well. Right, right. Slim weight injections. Loss inje <laughs> weight, loss in weight loss injections. Um, very topical question, and I'll give you a science answer, and I'll give you a kind of process answer. So the science answer, so the question is, are, everyone is familiar with Wegovi, you know, and so, you know, and, and the Zempic and all of these various different things, okay? And um, so the question, the, the, the first question I'll deal with is, are these safe in liver disease, okay? Now, um, from a, a medical scientific perspective, well, there have been very large trials of these as a treatment for fatty liver disease, okay? So they have been used as a therapy in liver disease and they were very safe and effective. So that would tend to answer the question because if they've actually been trialed in people defined by having liver disease and those trials were successful and the drug was safe, it would tend to suggest it's safe, okay? Um, now, the usual caveats for any drug is that there are... Um, two forms of liver disease, essentially, there are those with cirrhosis and those without. Now, with PBC, the majority of people don't have cirrhosis. That's why the name was changed. Now, there are some people with it, but the majority don't have it. And people with cirrhosis split into two groups, those with complications and those without. So basically, there are three groups of people with PBC. The majority don't have cirrhosis. And then of the rest, the majority who do have cirrhosis don't have complications. And then you've got a small group of people with complications. OK, now, in general, all drugs are less well handled when you have cirrhosis and they tend to be badly handled if you've got cirrhosis with complications. So I would tend to avoid any therapy out of the ordinary if I had cirrhosis and I would absolutely avoid them if I had advanced cirrhosis, okay? Now, I can't remember off the top of the head, my head the, the fatty liver disease trials. I, I'm not a fatty liver disease doctor. But I tend, I'm not aware whether they excluded cirrhosis, but I would imagine they probably did because the drug handling is more unpredictable. Um, but for, the, um, for people who don't have cirrhosis, these drugs were very safe and were very effective. And obviously there they were being used to treat fat deposition in the liver, but lo and behold, they also worked to help people lose weight, which is why they worked for fat in the liver. So that's the science answer. Um, the non-science answer um, is that the, the labelling for these drugs say avoid in liver disease, which is illogical. Now, how can I say that they are safe in liver disease because they've been trialled and yet the label says they're not for use? That is drug companies covering their 
books, okay, because um, they haven't been evaluated in every other liver disease. So there are companies making a lot of money, as you'll be aware, out of these drugs. And so if you were to have people with liver disease who had complications, even if it was unrelated to the drug, it, you know, it would damage that. So, you know, it's like you read almost any drug leaflet, um, drug inserts in a drug pack, and it will say, you know, um, unsafe in pregnancy. OK, not one of those drugs has ever been trialed in pregnancy and there is no evidence they're unsafe in pregnancy, but there is no proof that they're safe. How do you prove a negative? And so essentially, as a catch all, if they don't know something is safe, they say presume that it's unsafe. It's like those signs we see nowadays to say we can't guarantee that there are no nuts in this, even though we, there are no nuts in it. Right. Well, how do you use that information? So um, for people with nut allergy, so it's a it's a catch all. So there is no evidence, you know, that these are unsafe, but they are said to be avoided in liver disease. And I've been caught out with this by saying to people in my clinic where they've sort of wanted to look at this as a as an option, and they and I said it sounds it's fine for me. I've you know, trials in liver disease, etc., 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 and then they've tried to get them and been told you can't because you have liver disease. So I think it, it needs an intelligent discussion. Um, I would avoid them in cirrhosis. I would absolutely avoid them in cirrhosis with complications. So I think it's one to have a, a discussion about. Are they useful for losing weight? Um, they are. Um, they're not a magic bullet nothing ever is um, and a lot of what they do is basically make you feel sick all the time and that means you don't want to eat so they are not a magic way of losing weight um, they are something useful and they work for you and may help with it but they're not a magic bullet right the other question often is about bariatric surgery so obesity surgery in its various different forms the answer is going to be exactly the same for a variety of reasons to do with, you know, varices, risk and things like that. You want to avoid those in cirrhosis, OK, because you can get varices on the abdominal wall. They do an operation. You end up with me a mess. But those are perfectly straightforward and safe, you know, as any other surgery is in people with PBC who don't have cirrhosis. So <clears throat> these things are at a population level very useful. They are not an easy solution, far from it, but they are a, a useful option for people. And generally speaking, from a medical point of view, they are safe in people with non-serotic PBC. But you may find people are reluctant to use these approaches in people with cirrhosis from a not a terribly informed way. But unfortunately, you know, not everyone knows as much about PBC as that all the people on this call, and I mean all the people on this call. So, um, so I, you know, I, I know. But just remember, I mean, if somebody says you can't take these in liver disease, um, ask them about the the and and it, you know, it's the you know the New, the Lancet, the New England Journal of Medicine published these trials. So they're they're very well conducted trials. A chap called Phil Newsom, who was in Birmingham, is now in King's, very good UK hepatologist, did the trials. They're very good trials. These drugs are clearly very safe in non serotic people with liver disease. And generally, I mean, without sounding daft. Um, Fatty liver disease is much more like a liver disease than PBC is. PBC is a disease of the bile ducts, not of the liver. So actually the liver is much better in terms of its function in PBC than it is in fatty liver disease. So if something's safe in fatty liver disease, it's going to be safe in PBC. But that might be too much information for the average person who says, you know, computer says no. Yeah, and I think that's potentially what's happening, isn't that, because of I the... I think so. I think so. Computer says no. Yeah. Right, 